Hey, what's up guys? It's Mike with Alpha Reptile back with another video today and today is the 21st day of Jam Pack July. Before we get onto the herb highlight, I really wanted to say thank you to each and every one of you that have subscribed to my channel and supported me for the last eight years, I believe it is. So I just want to say thanks so much. We finally hit 50,000 subscribers on Friday, July 20th and ooh. I just want to say thanks. I'm super excited and there'll be more on Monday, so stay tuned for that. But let's get this fine Saturday rolling with a beautiful herb highlight video. As you can tell by the title, we're going to be using Dixon, the Europlatus gunthrai, as our herb highlight today. The Europlatus genus of geckos is endemic to Madagascar, so that means they really only live on that island. Now there are leaf tails of different genera that live on other continents especially, <laughs> but the Europlatus genus is only found on Madagascar and today we're going to be specifically focusing on the Europlatus gunthrai. Now if you guys aren't familiar with the format of this video, usually I start off with kind of telling you how I got Dixon and how he kind of came to my den, I call it, my reptile room. And then in the second half, we move on to talking about the natural history as well as their husbandry and care in captivity. So make sure you stay tuned for that. If you're just here to see their care and husbandry, make sure you go to this time right here and you guys can go check it out. The story of how I acquired Dixon is extremely similar to how I got Bowser. So if you haven't seen that video, make sure you click up here for you guys to go check it out. Uh, it's basically last herb highlight video you learn about red acu monitors. I actually got Dixon at the Calgary Reptile Expo, which is happening twice a year, typically in September and in May or very late April. I was just strolling through the expo and I came across this Europlatus gecko that I've never heard the name of and I was kind of confused and intrigued. So. I looked at it, I talked to the guy, you know, discussed uh, care and what the heck that animal is. After deciding that it was a really unique gecko and that I might be interested, I decided to head on home and do some research of my own where I did a bunch of Googling and contacted a couple breeders in the States to get their opinions and kind of get general care parameters because unfortunately there really isn't that much about this specific species online. It was at this time that I also got extremely smart. Um, I didn't ask my dad. I snuck him into the house after asking my mom and she gave me the go ahead. She wasn't really all that thrilled about not telling my dad, but I said, screw it, I'm gonna do it anyways. So that night I ended up going to the greenhouse, picking up some plants because I really had everything else that I needed to set up a tank. I had the tank, I had the light, I had substrate, I had wood, I had bamboo, leaf litter. I had the whole shebang all ready to go and that night I actually set up his enclosure. The following day I went back to the Reptile Expo, bought Dixon and brought him to his new setup. And that's the setup he's actually in right now. Just so you all are aware, I bought Dixon in September of last year, so 2017 and it is now July, but my dad only found out about him in May while I was in Belize, and so, you know, eight months without knowing, and he just didn't care. I, I was kind of pissed. I was like, why didn't I just tell you first? Anyways, it's fine. We're here now. Okay, I get it. That's enough of Dixon coming into the room. Uh, you've heard enough. Now we can move on to their natural history and their husbandry. So let's do that. This is a disclaimer. So if you guys are starting to think you want a Europlatus gecko, I don't blame you, but do not use this as your sole source of research. This is a great starting point, but make sure you do your own due diligence, going, researching, figuring out what's best for you, because not everybody's gonna be best suited for the Europlatus gunthrai. Other people might want larger geckos, smaller geckos, whatever you want, make sure you do some research that's not just this video. Sorry about that, I had to throw that in there because I feel like it's important that you guys do some research besides this video. Anywho, your Platus gunthrai or the Gunther's leaf tail gecko is an endangered species of lizard based on the IUCN red list as of 2011. And like I said earlier, it is endemic to the island of Madagascar and it was discovered in 1908 but didn't really resurface back in the literature until about 1970. Its general appearance totally depends on the parameters that you're keeping it in. There'll be a light shade of tan brown with darker brown patches all over the body. As you can see, they can change and flare up the red and browns in them. So every time you see them, they might look a little bit different. What's nice about them is they're a very small species of gecko. They only reach a maximum length of about six to seven inches and that is a a huge one. Dixon is only around four and that translates to about 15 centimeters long. You also have to keep in mind that the size in the genus of Europlatus ranges anywhere from three to four inches which is only about 10 centimeters 
all the way up to 12 to 13, sometimes even 14 inches, and that is about 35 centimeters. So a crazy amount of difference in this whole genus. Based on the information provided in the IUCN red list, these guys are native to only a very small geographic range, covering only a total of about 3,554 square kilometers, or for you Americans, that's 2,208 square miles. They tend to exist in much lower altitude, ranging from only about 20 meters to about 120 meters above sea level, which leads them to be tolerant to much higher temperatures than many of the other Europlatus geckos. They exist in dry deciduous forests, which means basically throughout the year their leaves will all disappear and it'll just be kind of a twiggy landscape. And then come the rainy season, everything will get green and lush again. In their natural habitat, they have a large kind of elevation difference. You can find them foraging in the leaf litter and you can also find them sleeping and basking about five to six meters in the air. Now please be mindful that the geographic data as well as some of this data is all based on a 2011 study conducted by the IUCN. So in about seven years time since they conducted this study, things could have changed a ton. I know in Madagascar there is a lot of deforestation and more urbanization occurring, so that could be detrimental to many species of animal, let alone gecko, let alone Europlatus. So that also could be factored in now. Whether that is for better or for worse, uh, it's hard to say, but I think we all kind of know, unfortunately, which way that's leading. That really covers their general uh, Madagascar climate as well as where they are found in the world and some of their natural history. So why don't we transition to their captive care. So captive care on Europlatus geckos is something that is much different species to species but thankfully Europlatus gunthrae is one of the most bulletproof or most forgiving of those species. And when I say most forgiving I mean compared to the others and specifically related to their temperatures because their temperatures are much more tolerable than other things like Europlatus fantasticus or the satanic leaf tail gecko. Their temperatures like to be low to mid 60s. Thankfully we don't have to deal with that with the Europlatus gunthrae. Europlatus gunthrae is one of those bulletproof species meaning that it will take temperatures in the mid 80s or for those of you guys that's like 25, 26 degrees Celsius. So they will be able to tolerate that temperature for a couple hours at a time. You just want to make sure that A, their nighttime temperatures are dropping very significantly and B, that those very high temperatures do not stay there at a constant for a long stretch of time. Ideally, you're going to want their temperatures to be around 70 to 75 degrees or 20 to 24 degrees Celsius. Their ambient humidity should be around 60 to 80 percent at all times. I achieve this by misting Dixon several times a day, once when I wake up, once typically during the middle of the day, and then once in the middle of the night. Now due to their relatively low daytime temperatures, you really don't require a heat spot because most of our homes are within their range of comfortable temperatures. However, if you do decide to put on a very, very low wattage heat bulb, that's not necessarily a bad thing if you have a large enough tank and it's not heating up the whole tank because they will use that hotspot. I will strongly recommend that you guys should have UVB provided for your Europlatus gecko. I provide it for Dixon, so I think it's beneficial to Europlatus gunthrae as well as all the genus of Europlatus. As for what bulb I'd recommend, I would strongly recommend using the T5 high output bulbs, whether that's Arcadia or Zoomed, it's not a big deal. Pick whichever you like and use it. I would say a 5.0 UVB or a 6% Arcadia bulb would be good. If you set up their cage properly, it should allow them to have a good UV gradient from the highest point to a lower point and then eventually there should be none at places in the tank. This allows the animal to self-regulate its UV requirements, whether it needs to produce D3 or not, then it will move various points around the cage. If you are including a hotspot on a side note, I would strongly recommend putting the UV right where that hotspot is because it's kind of in debate right now whether reptiles actually can use the UV rays to go around and expose themselves to various different UV exposures or if it's just associated with, hey, that's heat and sun and as a benefit, I get UVB. With that said, speaking specifically about Europlatus gunthrae, I would strongly recommend only one individual be kept in a cage that is 12 by 12 by 18. And to me, that's even a little bit small. Now I know that's what I'm housing Dixon in, but he will eventually get an upgrade, so don't worry about that. 
It's just that if you're housing more than one, I would strongly recommend using an 18 by 18 by 24. As for the interior of the enclosure, it should provide regions of very dense vegetation, as well as the opposite, more open, so that way the animal is able to move and also get away from view if need be. Now decorations include, but are not limited to, live plants, cork bark, fake plants, bamboo, spiderwood, and various different branches of varying thicknesses. However, one thing I will strongly recommend for everybody is leaf litter. You see in this clip right here that I have leaf litter, and under the leaf litter it is bioactive, so there's isopods and springtails and, and whatever other organisms made it in there during the time that I've had this tank set up, so I strongly recommend that you have leaf litter and a good substrate. Now that you have an idea of the size of the enclosure, what should go in the enclosure, and the parameters that are needed to be maintained during the day, why don't we talk about diet? Now, unlike some of your more popular geckos in the hobby, like the crested gecko, gargoyle gecko, uh, even day geckos primarily will use it, the Europlatus is different, and they are almost strict insectivores. They will eat mollusks, like a snail, but other than that, uh, they are pretty much strict insectivores and will not be able to be fed the crested gecko diet that you'd feed to your other lizards. So what should they be fed and how often? Well, how often? I feed every, typically every two days, but as juveniles, you can feed once a day. That's not going to hurt them. It'll just help them maintain a steady growth rate as well as overall health. Now, Dixon's like four years old, so I really don't need to continue power feeding him like that. I feed him every two to three days, pretty much as many crickets as he'll eat in about five, ten minutes. And I think that's very beneficial to him because he is looking really good and uh, he's still very hungry whenever I go in there with crickets. Now, prey items, like I said, these guys will eat snails, they'll eat crickets, they'll eat roaches, they'll eat low locusts, they'll eat waxworms, they'll pretty much eat any insect. If you had like mantid babies, whatever, they will eat. As long as it fits in their mouth and it's a reasonable size for them, then I would recommend throwing it in there. Because I know speaking from experience, Dixon is an insane eater. Phew, that does it. Ah, that was a long video. I didn't expect it to take that long, but I know I shared a lot more details with you guys right now than I have in most of the other herp highlights. I hope you guys enjoyed. I really hope you learned something and you and you gained a new appreciation for these wonderful genus of reptiles that we call Europlatus geckos. They're incredible and I really hope you guys found a new appreciation for them and might consider getting one yourself. Just wrapping up this video, I figured I should share my thoughts on leaf tails and on Europlatus gunthrii in general. As a whole, I would say they make for incredible pets. However, that is for only those people that kind of want a more hands-off pet. Uh, they're kind of like a chameleon in that sense and that you really shouldn't bug them too much unless you really have to bring them out. They're not something like a leopard gecko, bearded dragon, crested gecko, whatever that you can hold relatively regularly and not have any ill effects. These guys do get stressed out and they are more fragile and apt to jump than many of the other reptiles. So with that said, if you can tolerate that, then I would strongly recommend you pick one of these up in the future. Of course, do your research. They make a great pet. They're super interactive. They'll pretty much always eat off tongs. They make for an incredible pet for those of us that are like me and go to bed at like two, three in the morning every day and would like some interaction right before we go to bed. So these guys are awake and active and ready to go during the nighttime. Consider that when you're buying your pet. I know this was a long video. I really hope you guys stuck through it. Like I said, thank you very much. I really appreciate the 50,000 subscribers. I will be making a video on Monday just kind of like going through and remembering, maybe if I have time to edit it, but uh, definitely will be a video of 50,000 very soon. So I want to thank you all very much for watching this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked it, make sure you click that like button down below. It really does help me out and lets me know that you guys want to see more of this kind of content. And while you're down there, you can leave any comments, questions, whatever I might have missed in this video in the form of a comment in the comment section. I answer pretty much every single comment if it's actually like a sentence or a question. And if you really like this video and you want to subscribe to my channel and build the Phoenix fam, then make sure you click that subscribe button right down below and right next to it, play Ding Dong Dish with the doorbell and you will not be disappointed. In fact, you'll be notified every single time I post a video or go live, which in the month of July is every single day. So I want to thank you all very much for watching. We'll see you tomorrow on the live stream. Later.